I came here to MIT from Europe 22 years ago in order to learn how to support and facilitate such a deep cycle of innovation and learning. One of the first things uh, that I learned and picked up kind of when getting involved in more practical projects uh, and uh, change um, initiatives is that there are two very different sources of learning. One is learning by reflecting on the past, and the other one is learning by sensing and actualizing emerging future possibilities. While most of the, uh, uh, almost all of the existing learning methodologies are based on the first source of learning, learning by reflecting on the experience of the past, I became more interested in how to develop a supporting social technology that you know, enables not only individuals, but complex systems to learn from the emerging future by sensing and actualizing emerging future possibilities. And a first step to inquire that space has been um, to do an interview study with 150 innovators and thought leaders and entrepreneurs and creative people that each in their own field had been creating something new in order to listen to their journey into their practices and find out what is the deeper process these people are, are actually doing. One of them was Brian Arthur, formerly Stanford University, and then later the head of the economics department at the Santa Fe Institute. And it was Brian Arthur, actually, who very succinctly summarized a deeper innovation and learning process that I have heard many other practitioners describing in a variety of ways. And um, the way he summarized it was that he said that there are two types of cognition. One is downloading, which is basically um, acting based on habits of the past in your thinking and in your way you interact with your environment. And the other one is a deeper innovation process uh, that he referred to with the word knowing. And um, when I and my colleague Joe Jaworski asked him um, so what actually is the process kind of that uh, allows you to access this deeper source of innovation that really is at the root of all profound innovation in science and also in business? He said basically that you have to go through a three-stage process that begins with observe, observe, observe which really means to go out to experience the system you're dealing with from the edges, to kind of to look at it and um, observe it from very different angles. And then kind of as you do that and as you move into the places of most potential that can teach you most about how to, um, how to come up with creative responses given the situation or the challenges that you face, the second stage is to retreat and reflect and allow the inner knowing to emerge. He also said, go to the place of stillness, of inner stillness, where knowing comes to surface. So it's really about accessing the deeper sources of our intuition, both as an individual and also uh, as a team, as a group, as a system. And then, as uh, from this process, uh, one or two or three kind of a few ideas and sparks of the future begin to emerge, you explore them by acting in an instant, by rapid cycle prototyping, by moving into uh, a fast cycle process where you prototype something very local, very fast, but sufficient enough to generate feedback from relevant stakeholders to the situation. And then, given that feedback, you iterate and iterate and iterate. It's basically a way of accessing the intelligence that's situated kind of uh, around your prototype idea, kind of in the ecosystem kind of that, you know, is holding the prototyping idea that you want to bring into reality. So that was the first learning, that there is such a deep learning cycle that is going through these different stages that can be described in this way. The second thing that I learned is 
that this kind of process really only works if you, as an entrepreneur, as an innovator going onto that journey, engage in some inner leadership work. And the moment I really stumbled into that insight was by talking with the late CEO of Hanover Insurance, um, Bill O'Brien, who after you know, uh, conducting and leading many processes of transformation and change, summed up his own experience with the following word. The success of an intervention depends on the interior condition of the intervener. Let me translate. The success of what I do as a leader, as an innovator, as a change maker, depends on the inner place, depends on the source from that I operate. So it's not what I'm doing, or not only what I'm doing, it's not only how the process I'm applying to a situation, but it's the source that I am operating from. It's the quality of attention and intention and presence that I bring into a situation. That is, he says, that makes all the difference. When I heard these words, I realized um, that I had no idea about this third dimension, the source level. All I knew was about the what and the how, but the source level, I really never considered or reflected upon. And I also realized that this is not only a blind spot for myself, but really a blind spot for the entire field of uh, leadership research and most of social sciences. So it brought me kind of onto this pathway of uh, developing Theory U as a social field theory that not only looks at the what and the how, but that really makes visible the source dimension that we are operating from as individuals, as teams, as organizations, as larger systems, and the impact is it has depending on which source we are operating from. So today, I would summarize the source dimension that Bill O'Brien was pointing me towards by differentiating between three inner places or three capacities that we need to cultivate as change makers, innovators, and leaders. The first one is the open mind, by which I mean the capacity to suspend our old habits of judgment, basically to, to see with fresh eyes. The second one is the open heart, by which I mean the capacity to empathize, to redirect our intention, to look at a problem not just from my angle, but also from the angle of the other stakeholders that are involved in the uh, situation. And number three, to cultivate the open will, which is essentially the capacity to let go and let come. Let go of the old and let come of the emerging new possibilities. These two insights basically summarize the two foundation stones of the U theory and the U process. So it's kind of a process on the one hand, but it's kind of this inner cultivation work uh, related to uh, the opening of the mind, the opening of the heart, and the opening of the will. On the other hand, that in our view really makes all the difference. The question, of course, now is, OK, uh, if that's kind of the framework, right, how do you apply it? Kind of how do you really make it practical? And the, the, the theory you really is these two things. It's kind of, on the one hand, a framework. On the other hand, it's, it's a method, which is a set of tools and practices that actually allows you to move from one state of the social field, kind of that's operating, say, in a very reactive way, to another state of the social field that's more generative and more co-creative.